Hello, everybody. Welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Today, Monday, we're going to talk about something very interesting, the Ten Commandments of the Mafia. out a, a quick thank you for many of you who have sent prayers for my daughter uh, you know she has a little bit of a health issue she's gonna be okay uh, but we've been getting so many nice comments and so many people have been sending well wishes and prayers so thank you very much really appreciate that so what are we gonna do today you know uh, very interesting back in uh, 2007 in Palermo Italy uh, the Italian authorities happened to stumble upon the house of a uh, Mafia guy, his name was Salvatore Piccolo, and he had been on the run for quite some time. And they finally caught up with him, and he had uh, like a villa somewhere in Palermo, Italy. And uh, they went through the villa, and they discovered something that was very, very interesting. And it was actually written in Italian, I believe, on paper, something that we've never heard of before. And they titled it, or he titled it, The Ten Commandments of the Mafia. And uh, it was actually Ten Commandments that you're supposed to uh, uphold if you're part of that life. And in 2008, uh, the Discovery Channel actually made a documentary out of it. And I was one of the uh, principal interviewees in that documentary. So if you want to catch it, again, it's Ten Commandments of the Mafia. I believe it's all over YouTube. You can probably get it on DVD or whatever. But very, very interesting. And, you know, some people have said that those Ten Commandments were initially made to coexist with the Ten Commandments of our Lord God. I don't know that that to be true. I don't believe so. I never heard of that. It was just only speculation and rumor, but they certainly don't correspond or correlate to one another. But uh, I want to go over that because it's very interesting, and I think uh, it'll give you a better understanding of what the Mafia was originally built upon. And I think before I get into that, I have to go back to the uh, Code of Omerta. I'm sure you people have heard that before. Uh, it is a, allegedly the code of silence where everybody that is a made member of the mafia or Cosa Nostra here in this country is not supposed to talk about it. So it's a code of silence. Well, actually, it's more than that. It's actually a, co uh, a, a code of solidarity, a code of uh, loyalty. And really, the basis of Omerta is not so much in talking about the life, but it's really talking about law enforcement. And in Omerta, they consider it demeaning, they consider it shameful to talk to law enforcement for any reason. Even if one of your enemies was to hurt you, you're not supposed to go against them and speak to the law. It would be shameful if you did that, because if you have an enemy and he tries to hurt you, you're supposed to take revenge. That's the mafia way. And uh, that was really what the code was all about. As a matter of fact, it was so extreme that if you got in trouble yourself, if you were indicted for something and you were innocent, you aren't even supposed to defend yourself when it came to law enforcement. You're supposed to keep your mouth shut. That's how extreme it was. So it wasn't so much about, you know, mentioning that there is a mafia, but it was about breaking that code and, and speaking to law enforcement at any point in time. It was considered shameful and demeaning. And, you know, to give you a, an example of that, when... Um, Frank Costello was shot. Uh, it was an attempted assassination, probably know this. And Chin Giganti, the boss of the Genovese family, one time boss, has passed away. He was a shooter. Well, when law enforcement went to Costello, he refused to identify Giganti as the shooter. And that was, he was shot on, on the orders of Vito Genovese. He refused to even identify him. So in reality, Costello really kept that oath of Omerta. And, uh, you know, in the United States, um, you know, I think that uh, that code was broken a long time ago. You know, some of the guys got uh, uh, they got very, um, you know, out in the open, I would say. I think it started with Joe Colombo. He was kind of flashy. He started the Italian American Civil Rights League. The people in the life didn't like that, especially the old timers, Carlo Gambino. They were against it. You know, John Gotti, I guess, another example, he was out there, whether it by choice or just the media was different. And they just made him a superstar. And he kind of, you know, some people say he reveled in it, but that was his life. You know, that was really frowned upon in the old time mafia days. And, um, you know, 
the, the mafia in, uh, here in the United States was first really broken open or, people, or law enforcement was made aware of it or identified it uh, when Joe Valachi uh, first became an informant back in uh, the early 1960s. I think in 1963 or 64, he testified in front of the McClellan Committee and he told about the mafia and their secrets and so on and so forth. In Italy, a fellow by the name of uh, Tommaso Buscetta I think in 1984, he was the guy that really revealed what was going on in the mafia in Italy. So that code has been broken. And here in the United States, of course, uh, there's been more uh, information given on wiretaps and bugging devices and so on and so forth that I don't think it's really a secret anymore as far as what the mafia is all about, what Cosa Nostra in this country is all about. So, but that's kind of the history of it. That's what omerta, omerta really means. and. Um, you know, I wanted to give you a little background, but I'm actually going to read uh, the Ten Commandments as they were written by um, this fellow Piccolo, and uh, we can discuss each one of them a little bit. Number one, no one can present himself directly to another of our friends. There must be a third person to do it. Well, that's the mafia way. That's also Cosa Nostra here in this country. What that means is if I'm a made guy, let's say with the Colombo family like I was, and John Gotti is a made guy uh, with the Gambino family, but we have never met as main guys. I can't go up to John and say, hey, John, you know, I'm made with the Columbos. Let me introduce myself. I'm not allowed to do that. And he wouldn't acknowledge me, and rightfully so. A third made guy who knows the both of us, who's been formally introduced to us, has to introduce us as made guys. So he would uh, be in the middle and he'd say, Michael, I'm Egan Ostra, uh, John Gotti. And that's how we would meet. So that is a, a principal role. And that's for security reasons more than anything else. You just can't identify yourself. So that's uh, commandment number one. Number two, never look at the wives of friends. Well, you know what that means. You don't mess around with somebody's wife, somebody's daughter, somebody's sister, somebody's mother. I think everybody knows that that's a strict commandment. I told you about uh, a friend of mine, I think in a previous video, where I dropped him off at his house, and because he and his brother had killed his father, who was another made guy, they were all made guys, uh, they was haunted by the ghost of his dad. He would never go into his house if nobody was in there alone. So that was a hard, fast rule. And for the most part, you know, during my experience in that life, that was kept. You didn't mess with somebody else's wife, daughter, sister, mother. That was hands off. And I think that's a good com uh, commandment. I mean, I'm not, you know, uh, suggesting that some people die over it, but that's the mob way. Third commandment, never be seen with cops. Now, you know, back in the day, you weren't even allowed to be in the presence of police. You weren't allowed to be associated in any way. You weren't allowed to talk to them, be seen with them, be around them. That was in the mafia. Was it strictly kept? I imagine so. I don't really know. I wasn't a member of the mafia. I was here because in Austrian America. And honestly, in my experience here, that wasn't, you know, totally the way. Some of us had relatives that were police. Um, and, you know, sometimes we might, you know, be in their company. Doesn't mean we were talking to them. Doesn't mean we were divulging information. I don't think it was as seriously taken here in the United States. However, if somebody was hanging out around police, obviously that would raise suspicion. People would not like that. You'd have to answer for it and certainly let people know what it was all about. So, um, but it's pretty much, you know, pretty much the same here. The fourth commandment, don't go to pubs and clubs. Mafia, they didn't want you to go to nightclubs. They didn't want you to be seen out and about around. Uh, obviously, that was not kept here in the United States. I mean, the nightlife, uh, you know, when I was back in that life, I was out six nights a week in various clubs. I actually had uh, interest in clubs, and so did many, many of the guys. We liked to hang out that way. Uh, my father, you know, I told you of us going to the Copacabana and the Orchid Room and places like that. So uh, that might have been a commandment of the Mafia. It certainly wasn't a commandment of, the, of uh, Cosa Nostra. And uh, you should see the differences as I talk about this, because I do believe that this is what the Mafia was all about in Italy. And you see the differences between the Mafia in Italy and Cosa Nostra here in the United States. Two distinct and separate organizations, pretty much the same principles, but different in many ways. So that was the fourth. The fifth commandment, always being available for Cosa Nostra is a duty, even if your wife is about to give birth. What they're saying here is that Mafia Cosa Nostra comes before anything and everything in your life. The night that I got made, Tom DeBella, who was the acting boss for Persico, he told me straight out, Michael, 
This comes before anything in your life. I was told this actually when I was proposed and uh, he told me what was going to be required of me as a recruit. And then that was repeated, obviously, the night that I got made. If your mother is sick and dying, you're at her bedside. You leave your mother's side. You come and serve us. From now on, one number one in your life before anything and everything. That's what the Mafia Cosa Nostra is allegedly all about. Was it really kept here in the United States? Mm, I don't know. You know, I, I mean, uh, look, I ultimately walked away from that life. I put my family first. So... I violated my oath in that regard, but for me, it was the right decision. But, you know, I don't, I don't know. I think that, you know, you come in, you have an idealistic view of the life. You want to keep all the rules and regulations, but that is pretty extreme, I would say. Okay, that's number five. Uh, number six, appointments must absolutely be respected. This was without a doubt. In that life, number one, you can never be late. If you're late, that's a sign of disrespect. I remember one time I was traveling from Long Island into New York. I had to be on Carroll Street, Monty's Restaurant, where Colombo, you know, headquarters used to be for most of the, uh, the higher up. And uh, I was late. I wasn't yet a captain. I was, uh, was a soldier and I was late. There was heavy traffic on the Bell Parkway. I got there late. And uh, boy, did I get a tongue lashing and I, I was, you know, they really gave it to me. And I'll tell you how they made the point that I can never be late again. There's no excuses. They told me, leave the night before if you have to, but you're never late. The next day, I was told to meet at Monty's restaurant at 12 o'clock. I got there at 1130 and I stood there. I waited outside 1130, 1230, 130, 230. Finally, at about four o'clock, OK, my captain pulled up and he looked at me. And he said, you get the message now, Mike? And it struck me. I said, yes, sir. He said, fine, I'll see you tomorrow. And he left. I mean, that's how serious it was. You're never late in that life. That's a sign of disrespect. And it could be something even more meaningful. If something was going down, you had to be there. You, you just don't come late. So that is something that was well kept. Number seven, wives must be treated with respect. Well, um, I can say this, one of the shows that I hated the most uh, was mob wives, uh, because it certainly didn't depict mob wives the way they should have been depicted. We did respect our wives in that regard, as far as in the house. I'm not going to say that, you know, guys didn't fool around and guys maybe didn't have a girlfriend. I'm not going to say that. So maybe that's hypocritical. You know, you can say what you want, but, um, but you know, in the house, in the family, wives were given the respect that they deserved. They were never really brought into that life, tried to keep them separate and apart. Um, I guess there is some irony in that, some hypocrisy in that. I'll be the first to admit it. Uh, but anyway, that was a commandment of that life. Number eight, when asked for information, the answer must be the truth. When you are speaking to another mob guy, you're supposed to tell the truth, not supposed to lie. Now, do guys lie? They lie all the time. But you better be a good liar. You better back yourself up. You better not be caught. Because if you are caught, serious consequences. You don't lie to the boss. Okay, you don't lie to your capo, and if you're a, a, a you know a capo, you don't you don't lie. Period. That's what you're supposed to be. Now I will tell you right now, I lied to help people in that life, and there was times I may have lied to cover something up, maybe with one of my men. Is that a commandment that's really kept? No, but I think they're trying to tell you that honesty among one another uh, was supposedly something that was important and uh, important enough to be written down as a commandment. Okay, that was number eight. Number nine, nine, money cannot be appropriated if it belongs to others or to other families. And again, I'm reading this as it was translated from Italian into English. What they're saying is, you know, you don't cheat anybody. If you're given money to give to somebody, you give it. You make sure you give them the right count. You don't cheat anybody. Money is a big issue in that life. Money and power, big issues. You don't mess with either. And you don't infringe upon the territory of another family. You don't take from their territory unless you're given permission to do so. You clear it, you put it on record, and everybody knows about it. Uh, so you got to have honesty among each other. You got to have uh, integrity among one another. Uh, at least that's the way it was written. You know, and for the most part, in the old days, I, I believe that a lot of this was kept, you know, maybe many, many years ago. But I believe, you know, that the original foundation of that life. Uh, w was built on honor and integrity and obviously was corrupted after that. But that was the original intent of that life. That was number nine. Number 10, people who can't be part of Cosa Nostra, 
and that is anyone who has a close relative in the police. In other words, if you had a relative that might have been in part of law enforcement, might have been a judge, might have been in, you know, in some kind of lawful authority, you weren't allowed to be made a member. Was that true in here in the United States? No, um, it was not. Um, I know guys who uh, had relations in law enforcement. So, um, you know, as long as you didn't talk to them and you didn't provide information here in Cosa Nostra, it was okay. Back in the day in Italy, way back when, it was not okay. It was actually the 10th commandment. Further in that, it was uh, anyone with a two-timing relative in the family. I don't know exactly what that means, but I guess if you had a relative that was a snitch or a relative that uh, didn't have the right integrity, uh, you weren't allowed to be a member. I guess that counted. They really looked into your family for security reasons. Maybe they thought it would wear off on you if you had a family member that was you know, two-timing, playing both sides to the middle, I would say. And then lastly, anyone who behaves badly and doesn't hold to moral values. Again, uh, I'm reading the translation of the 10th commandment. Um, hold to moral values. I, I, I don't know what they meant by that, quite honestly. Um, I, I don't think they meant you had to go to church and, and be a good Catholic. Um, I guess maybe morally within the family, they, they expected you to hold you know, values of integrity and morality, I don't know. But to me, that's, uh, that's quite ironic that that would be the 10th commandment. But anyway, that's the 10 commandments of the mafia as it was uncovered in Italy in 2007 in Palermo, Italy. Uh, Salvatore Piccolo, who was a mafia guy uh, who was on the run for many years, that's where this was discovered. So that's kind of it, you know. So look, people, again, did I violate Omerta? Yes. I didn't violate Omerta when I took a plea and went off to prison. I did my time. It wasn't a cooperation agreement that I had at that time. Obviously, I speak about it. I've been speaking publicly about that life for 24 years. So in that regard, uh, I violated Omerta, um, not according to the, the strict interpretation of these Ten Commandments, but uh, I think we understand the essence of it, and you're not supposed to be talking about that life. Uh, obviously, a lot of people did that here in the United States in 85 when the RICO law really started to become effective. A lot of people, you know, turned informant and so on and so forth. So, uh, you know, um, it's been greatly compromised, I would say, in the past, you know, 25, 30 years. But, you know, look, people, you got to be honest. Um, we have enough things going on in our lives. I tell this to young people all the time. Even when everything is good and you're doing the right thing, you know, life can hit you. My daughter right now, you know, out of nowhere, you know, she's got a health issue that, you know, it's fairly serious and we have to deal with it. And she's a good girl, does everything right. You know, mother, terrific mother. You know, she's a good kid. Even when everything is right, you're doing the right thing. You know, life just hits us. When you get involved in stuff like this, when you get involved in criminal activity, when you're doing the wrong thing, all you're doing is putting more baggage on your shoulders to carry around. And uh, you're going to have a tough life as a result. Me, very blessed. When I walked away from that life, yes, I had a lot of struggles, a lot of challenges, a lot of things I had to face. My family was disrupted for a, a great degree, but in the long, long haul, it's worked out for me. And uh, I've been uh, tremendously fortunate and very, very blessed. So I always encourage everybody, do the right thing in your life, stay on the right track, and uh, you know, you'll have a better time of it. I know a lot of you are struggling through this uh, pandemic. It's going to get better. Things are going to ease up. we got another big challenge with this election coming up, but it's going to get better. Do the right thing. Stay on track. Give yourself the best opportunity, okay, to become successful and to enjoy some happiness in this life. That's it. Thank you for subscribing. I think we're up to 185,000 subscribers in only three months. And, you know, thanks to all of you. I really appreciate it. I'm glad you're enjoying the content. MichaelFrancis.com, the coaching uh, community is really growing. People are being uplifted. We had a nice Zoom call. I've been in, I'm being in touch with a lot of people. Uh, I've also been coaching some people uh, personally, and it's been uh, uh, you know, a great benefit to me and to them, and we're gonna continue doing that. So, uh, and something you may not know, but I want you to look uh, forward to. Um, I've been asked all the time, was the mob really involved in the music industry? The answer to that is yes and in a pretty significant degree. And that's gonna be coming up. My dad, you know, had the involvement, Casablanca Records, Buddha Records, Morris Levy, a big name in that music industry, totally mobbed up. Very, very interesting. You're gonna be surprised at some of the uh, 
uh, performers and artists that got involved with us at that time. It was a time in my life that I'm familiar with and that's coming up. So stay tuned and uh, we'll see you uh, again this week. I know we just keep filling up with content. So stay safe, stay healthy. God bless. See you next time.